Let us worship God. The glory of God shines like a consuming fire. We have seen the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The voice of God thunders like a mighty storm. Out of the cloud, God speaks. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The Lord be with you and also with you. Holy and mighty God, gather us among your faithful ones, the people of your covenant, to stand in the light of your glory and listen for the word of the Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God alone is righteous. God alone is perfect. God alone is judge. Yet this holy, righteous God comes to us in love to save us. Rejoicing in God's grace, let us confess our sins. God of all glory, beauty, and grace, we have tried to hide from you, to hide our faces, to hide our sin. Yet we have never hidden your love for us, we have tried to search for you in temples, in clouds, on mountaintops, 
Yet you have already revealed yourself to us in the face of Jesus Christ. Forgive us and transform us so that our lives may shine with your glory, beauty, and grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting unto everlasting. The one who calls light out of darkness now shines in our hearts to reveal the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For God the Holy King, Almighty God and seated please. Friends in Christ, welcome to worship this morning. It is good to see some folks in the sanctuary, uh, although it is so icy out that we would encourage anyone who is thinking about coming at 1130 to uh, be safe and stay at home. Uh, but we are glad that you are here worshiping at home or worshiping here in the sanctuary. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. It is the last Sunday uh, before the beginning of Lent. Lent starts Wednesday for Ash Wednesday. We will have uh, a midday service here. You'll need to sign on uh, for that. Our evening service, though, will be pre-recorded and shown live. Um, but we have space for folks who'd like to come to the midday service, if you'd like. Also would remind you that a congregational meeting will be held uh, on two Sundays, the 28th, um, we will um, encourage folks uh, who are here to stay, but also those who were Zooming in. We have a need for a quorum of 200 people, so we ask that you sign up uh, to be part of that. The congregational meeting will take place between the services during the Sunday school hour. Uh, we have also some needs for room in the inn. 
for overnight hosts for a homeless ministry in Room in the Inn. This year we're hosting folks down at the Drexel campus. If you're interested in helping out, contact one of the pastors. It's still cold and there's much need. Uh, for Sunday school today, we continue with our Zoom class, Why, Oh God, Do You Stand So Far Off? It's the last of our classes in this Theodicy series. And in fact, uh, our teacher today is Professor Amy Plantinga Pau from Louisville Theological Seminary. I invite you to take part in that. Next week, uh, in the beginning of Lent, we'll have Jim Womack, who was the former art teacher at uh, MBA, and he'll be teaching on death and resurrection in a time of pandemic, looking at uh, Matthias Grunwald's The Eisenheim Altarpiece. It'll be a fabulous class, and I invite you to join and be part of that. Come, let us continue our worship. Lord be with you. God of shining splendor, your voice makes the earth tremble in wonder. Overshadow us with your spirit so that we may hear your word and live as faithful disciples and covenant people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Kings, the second chapter. Hear the word of God. <clears throat> now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in the whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And Elisha answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took off his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, 
Please let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted for you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That story that guy just read to you, that's quite some story. It's one of the most amazing stories in the Bible, I suspect. It has that Jordan River where uh, Elijah just touches the water and it splits in two, and Elijah and Elisha just walk through the water on dry ground. It, it has chariots of fire coming down and picking up Elijah, and Elijah goes up into a, a whirlwind. Holy smokes, it is one of the most amazing stories stories of the Bible. But, but since hearing that story, what have you done with that story? Did you take that story and throw it on a pile of all the other stories that you have from today? Take that story and throw it on the pile of the Happy Valentine's Dear story? Take that story and throw it onto the pile of the stories of, you know, I, I almost killed myself getting into my car and coming to church story. 
It's so slippery out story, the stories that we have. I'm going to read a story from Mark, not just a story, it's the word of God. Quite an amazing word. It may be in the top ten of the Bible's most amazing stories, I'm not quite sure. So before I read the word of God, I want you to think about what you're going to do with the word of God. What are you going to do with it after I read it? You ready? Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Hear the word of God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say. But they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about it, no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, what do we do with the story? I could toss it on the other stories from today, how I had to scrape the ice off my car. That story. All the stories of the day. How no one was here when I arrived. Turned on all the light. All the stories of the day. Life is full of stories. That's what life is. Story after story after story. And we just throw them on piles. Throw them on piles. Throw them on piles. They just pile up and we forget about them. Kind of reminds me of that show that I caught on Friday night on PBS, just this last Friday night, I know. Don't I live the life? PBS on Friday night, mm-hmm. Sometimes I follow that up with a bowl of Raisin Bran. I mean, it's life on the edge. I don't even know what the name of the show was called. I just happened to catch the last 10 minutes of it, as I said. But from what I gathered about the show, it was about a woman who lived in Boston, and her house was cluttered, just cluttered, just full to the brim. And there was a man who had her at the dining room table, who had just decluttered her house, and then was showing her things that she had in her house, but she didn't know she had in her house. And she sh he showed her one thing, and then another, and then another. And she was happy to see these things, But there was one item that made her cry. It was an autographed photo of Jackie Robinson that he had found. And she knew that it was going to be a perfect gift for her son, her son who loved Jackie Robinson, the perfect gift, and she cried. She had had it all her years, but it was hidden under a pile. I just told you a story, and you can add it to all the stories you have, and you'll re you won't remember that you have that story. That's life. But some stories, they can't be thrown into a pile. <laughs> They're just too important. 
I remember the member of my church who was at the Habitat house, and he happened to be wearing some dog tags, and I said to him, are those dog tags so that we can help you find your way back home? <laughs> I was just kidding him, and he laughed a bit, and then he said, no, these tags are from a buddy of mine from the war. Some stories are like that. You live the stories each and every day that are on your heart. Jesus is wondering what we're going to do with the story. You heard what Jesus was thinking, right? As they were coming down the mountain, he was thinking about his disciples. He was thinking about his disciples and what were they going to do with what they've just seen and heard. It was quite a moment. Jesus was transfigured. His clothes became white, bleach white. Suddenly there was Elijah, and suddenly there was Moses. It was amazing. Then a cloud, and then a voice from God that says, This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well. Please listen to him. What do you do with a story like that? He ordered them to tell no one about it until after the Son of Man was risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning, what does it mean, this rising from the dead? What does it mean? Do you see what the Gospel writer is doing? He has made the story of the disciples our story. He has given the question to all of us. What does Jesus mean? What does this rising from the dead mean? Have you got a story that answers that question? You see, the Christian religion has no proof. We have no proof. We can go looking for it. Once this pandemic is over, we could all fly over to Israel, get on a plane, get off the plane, get on a bus, get off the bus, and we'd pull into the parking lot that says, Tomb of Jesus. And I'd get off the bus and I'd, I'd lead you all up to the tomb of Jesus and we'd have to wait for a little bit because there's always folks who have to stop at the gift shop. Come on now. Okay, have we got everyone now? And I would say, you see here, this large stone here, this stone has been rolled away. God set it in its place. You see here, here's the linen cloth that was around his head. You see here, this is the shroud. And if you look very closely on the shroud, you can see the image of Jesus. And I know as we gather there, there would be some in the crowd who just, you know, all of it, just start, the tears would come and the Kleenex would come. And after a while, I think we'd sing a hymn. And then we'd say a prayer maybe. And, and then... And then we'd stand there for a little longer and, and then someone would say, maybe we should get a picture and we'd all gather up for a picture and, and some kind woman from, you know, Signal Mountain, Tennessee will take our picture and we'd put it on Facebook. Is that the proof? Tomb, cloth, shroud, is that the proof? Peter said, you know, we should build something up here. We need to remember this. He didn't know what to say because he was afraid. Jesus said, don't say a thing until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. So the disciples kept the matter to themselves, and they didn't say a thing 
wondering what rising from the dead, what does that mean? We are supposed to have an answer to that question. It is our life story. And we just can't put that answer on the pile of stories with all the other stories with all the other stories. We just can't keep that story to ourselves. We have a story to share. And we can't be afraid. It's the scariest thing to do, to share the story. It is scary. I know it's scary. I can see it at the end of Zoom meetings that we have at the church. And this is, we're all friends here. And at the end of the Zoom committee meeting, someone will say, can someone close us in prayer? And suddenly you can see everyone on the Zoom call just kind of look. Please don't call on me. It's the scariest thing to open your mouth in front of anyone and speak. In a few moments, you will speak. In a few moments, you will stand up before everyone and you will say the Apostles' Creed. What that is, is apostolic preaching. It is the sermon of Paul and Peter. This is what I believe. And they said it to the world over and over and over and over again. That's all they had. This is what I believe, that God gives life to the dead. God gives life to the dead. That's what God does. God does it over and over again. Abraham and Sarah, 99 years old. They should have been picking out gravestones, but instead on Valentine's Day, Abraham turned up the music, some nice quiet music, nice beautiful music. And Sarah gave him a giggle. I mean, come on, what are they doing? They were too old for this. What they're believing is that God gives life to the dead. Jesus was dead. Plenty of proof. Jesus was dead. You can ask the man who put in the nails, Jesus dead. You can ask the man who made the sign, here is the king of the Jews. Jesus is dead. You can ask the guy who climbed the ladder to put up the sign. Jesus is dead. You can ask the person who, who carried the body to the tomb. Jesus, dead. Plenty of proof. Dead. But there are people who are the proof that God raises people from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead, and I believe that you are one of those people. One of those people who just can't take that story and throw it on the heap of other stories. No, you're one of those people who know that God always produces a pulpit. And as scary as it is to climb into the pulpit, you cannot be silent because God gives life the dead. Here I am, Lord. Send me, Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was dead to sin and I'm alive to Christ Jesus. You're the proof. You're the proof. 
I can think of no better time to be the proof. Because there's plenty of proof for bad news out there. People seem to be able to share the bad news without any fear. They're all about dividing. They're all about sharing things that are just mean. They're all about hateful lies. They just keep selling it and 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 and hope that someone will grab hold of it. And someone always does, and they run with it. They just proliferate it on Facebook, whatever they want. Just send an email. Just wait. Someone will take the bait. There's always people who take the bait. They'll do it. Unless, unless there's a person who stands up and says, God gives life to the dead. Unless someone says, there isn't a wayward soul in this world. that doesn't deserve to come home to a party. You know how dark the world is. It's time to turn your life around. Because God gives life to the dead. Oh, they'll just keep selling that bad news, that hatred, that division. They'll keep selling it unless... Someone says there's nothing, nothing, nothing that will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. They'll keep selling it unless someone says, today the scripture is fulfilled. Today there's good news for the poor. Because I'm bringing it. Today, there's good news for the captive because I'm going to see them. Today, there's good news for the blind because I've got what they need to open their eyes. Today, there's good news for the oppressed because I've got a word that'll lift them up. God gives life to the dead. And if we're afraid of that, of speaking that, of living that, if we're afraid of that, and we're silent, then guess what? God gives life. It's your time to preach. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to do, obey everything 
that I have commanded you, and remember, I am with you always to the close of the age. Obeying the words of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Archer Raymond, son of Megan and Donnie Schlack, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Megan and Donnie, relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and teach that faith to your child, do you? And do you, as members of the body of Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture this child by word and deed, with love and prayer, encourage him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of the church, do you? And for the children at home and the child in the sanctuary, do you promise to love this baby, to be his friend, and to tell him about Jesus? If you do, please say yes. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within that covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. As God embraces you within the covenant, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess that faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Megan and Donnie, trusting in God's gracious mercy, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? With the whole church, let us stand and confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. So send your spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life. Pour out your spirit upon the body of Christ, that he, this one, may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you be all 
praise and honor and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. What name is given this child? Archer Raymond. Archer Raymond, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and be with you now and forevermore. Archer Raymond, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let us welcome this newly baptized one into the household of God. Live as a child of the light and let your light shine before others. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. In the face of Jesus Christ, the wondrous will of God revealed, God of glory transformed this world. With the boldness and confidence of God's children, let us pray, saying, Gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. Loving God, in Christ you embrace people of every nation and make them members of the same body, sharers in the promise of the gospel. For the holy church of God, that through its faithful witness, the wisdom of God in its rich variety be known in heaven on earth. Gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you judge the people with righteousness and the poor with justice. For nations, rulers, and authorities to forsake violence and be guided by the light of truth that righteousness may flourish and justice abound in every land. Gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. God of ages, in your sight nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Now when our land is troubled, be near to judge and save. May leaders be led by your wisdom May they search your will and see it clearly. We have turned from your way. Help us to reverse our ways and repent. Gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. Loving God, we never know when we might be entertaining angels unaware. For our city and for all who live here, that we may be a community of hospitality, welcoming the stranger, the newcomer, sheltering the refugee, gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. Creator God, in your providence, creation yields its good fruits, that all may enjoy its riches. For our planet Earth, that we may dwell peacefully with nature, be good stewards of its resources, and share its abundance for the sake of human flourishing. Gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our divine physician, you take pity on the weak. For those whose bodies are enfeebled by disease or whose spirits deliver, debilitated by illness, for those who wrestle with addiction and slog through treatments, we pray that they may be restored to wholeness of life. Gracious God, Lord of light, hear our prayer. Holy One, as you are well pleased with Christ, help us to live in a way that will be pleasing to you. As you have called us to listen to Christ, 
Help us to always heed his word and seek his will. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. With gratitude to God for all the blessings so richly bestowed upon us, with joy and thanksgiving, let us return with thanks our tithes and offerings.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the light of love around us and the fire of faith within us. As we go forth from this place, let our lives reflect the one who is the image of your glory, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. And together we offer the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You have a story to tell. Go tell it that God gives life to the dead. Go knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with us all, and all God's people said, Amen.